Mi'kmaq territories in Soko, Rexton, New Brunswick, October 17, 2013. <laughs> At approximately 7.30 a.m., over 200 cops of the Royal Colonial Mounted Police, or RCMP, descended on a Mi'kmaq protest camp that had been blockading fracking exploration equipment owned by Texas-based Southwestern Energy, or SWN. The Mi'kmaq are the original inhabitants of this land and have been engaged in a struggle against SWN and their intent to frack their territories for natural gas since earlier this summer. The cops came in guns drawn, with safety saw and several of them were outfitted with camouflage and carried semi-automatic rifles. They had surrounded the encampment where members of the Mi'kmaq Warrior Society were staying. They came in through the far exit, the far entrance near the highway with probably about 75 to 100 cops on that end. There were shots fired at one point. I believe one of the, peop one of the people in camo was firing in the air. I then saw Molotov cocktails being lobbed at heavily armed cops by people hiding in the woods. I was then kicked out of the conflict zone by a senior officer and threatened with arrest. If you do happen to come back, sir, I'm just saying, I'm not saying you are, but if you do, you will be placed under arrest. I refused to go behind the police line and kept the position where I could witness the events and avoid arrest for as long as possible. Attention! Attention! You are prohibited from hindering, interfering, or obstructing access to the staging area and storage facility or obstructing or impeding traffic. Anyone that continues to do so will be arrested and removed from this area by police. So you guys do work for SWN. So you do work for SWN. A tense standoff continued for the next two hours. Well, I'm going to tell my kids in the grave that I stood up for their water. I stood up for your guys' to take water too. All of your guys' kids. I could hear supporters gathering from behind a police line in the town of Rexton. And we're not leaving. We are seeing the state of and we have a no fear thing that we can be on this private land. So we're not moving around here, brother. Mi'kmaq supporters were able to break through the RCMP line and were rapidly headed in the direction of the blockade while singing songs. At this point I could see the police were panicking. The cops in camouflage moved in on the warrior encampment and another group of police formed the line to meet the supporters, effectively pushing me out of the conflict zone. Scuffles between police and supporters of the Warriors followed, and a fierce standoff between Mi'kmaq youth and the RCMP continued throughout the day. The cops used pepper spray and beanbag rounds on the crowd, which included many underage youth. Anger at the police was at a boiling point, and in fear, the cops abandoned their cars and moved to the safety of the police line. At around 1.30 p.m., supporters were asked to put down their cameras while people set the RCMP vehicles aflame, to the cheers of many. Fire trucks were told to turn around and let the cop cars burn. The cops continued to amass behind the police line. Cops in full riot gear, armored personnel carriers, and dozens of snipers filled the blockade site. But the fearlessness of the Mi'kmaq people was unquestionable, and they would not leave until the RCMP invaders were gone. Around this time, reports started coming in that all SWN equipment had been removed. Finally, around dusk, after arresting over 40 people, the cops retreated and left the zone. <laughs> on Saturday, hundreds of people from all over Turtle Island descended on the blockade site. The corporate media were told by locals that they were not welcome and were ordered to leave the area. I stood up. I stood up and told him to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> As reports of solidarity actions from around the globe came in, people blocked Highway 11 for several hours, signaling to the world that resistance against southwestern energy will continue until all frackers are gone. Yeah.